lot of our racing recipes uh, really include the longer distance type of racing, half Ironman, Ironman, marathon, half a, a marathon, and ultra running. But today we're gonna to talk about sprint and Olympic distance racing. And a lot of athletes, of course, do this as they get closer uh, in the racing uh, season to doing their longer races and they wanna tune up their speed by doing some of these Olympic distance uh, sessions. Today, I wanna use one of our athletes that's been an S-Fuels athlete and customer for around four or five years, has also been an Endure IQ squad member for that long, Lee. And Lee has been working with us and evolving over time and improving dramatically. And he recently posted on Instagram uh, his uh, successful result at one of the Olympic uh, triathlons uh, there in Texas and all of the fueling he used. Now, the nuance, of course, with Olympic distance racing is that, and in sprint distance racing, is of course that the intensity is higher, the duration's a little shorter. This is shorter. This is probably more zone four most of the race in reality, and maybe even peaking into zone five with some competitive tension at the end of the races. So that does have a lot of bearing in terms of what is it that causes us to slow, what causes us to you know, feel so intensely uh, exhausted with these races? Well, it's not all just about the calories that are available. In fact, a lot of the reason for why we slow on this shorter intensity races is to do with really the lactate and also <clears throat> the rise of neurotransmitters that actually happen as a function of this high intensity. And with that comes a rapid rise in the rate of how we perceive the exertion of this type of racing. The good news is this can be offset. Now clearly training helps. And of course, Endure IQ has a wide array of training programs that help you understand how to tune for that Olympic and short course racing. Specifically though, on training and on fueling, there's much we can do to really help to offset that rapid rise in intensity perceived exertion. Let's jump in. Hey, so before we jump straight into the race itself and how we really manage that rate of perceived exertion, let's talk a little bit about pre-race. And it's interesting in Lee's uh, post on Instagram, he talked a little bit about his perceptions, if you will, coming into the race. And the words he used in his post was borderline petrified. and The competition was at a higher level. And uh, this is true as you sometimes look around and you see the physiques of some of these athletes that can put you down. Even the gear that some of the athletes is using can you know, play around with your mind. One of the things though that you will find uh, with caffeine, of course, is that it affects the cognitive function as it relates to mood and also confidence. And one of the reasons that we apply caffeine prior to the race is really to up-level the cognitive functions to help you be more confident and have the mood to embrace the race and particularly high intensity racing. So that's a good start before we even get into the starting line and into the starting shoot to have our minds in a confident mood uh, going into the race. Let's talk now more about inside of the race and how we optimize. So like all of our recipe guides, we talk about what to do race morning. Uh, that includes the breakfast. And of course, for this sport, that's usually a very early breakfast. In Lee's case, for this particular race in Texas, it was 4 a.m. That's fairly common of what's needed to do. Lee's example in this race is really perfect in terms of our advocacy for what's needed on race morning in terms of feeling satisfied and some little calories to offset through the night. You're gonna burn some of that in the liver. So how do we offset some of that and make sure you're topped up uh, with liver glycogen before the gun goes off. But at the same time, we don't wanna take a bunch of sugars that can abso absolutely increase blood glucose and insulin and thereby blunten fat oxidation for the race, which we are certainly trying to avoid. So in Lee's case, some coffee, some Estriol's Life Bars, this is sufficient to feel satisfied. Again, the caffeine and the coffee will help facilitate that mood and to get into the right state before uh, getting close to uh, the race uh, start line and milling around with all of the athletes. And at that point, it's where Lee applied our Westfield's primed product to really think about both the 
caffeine and the taurine to have that calming, confident effect before the gun goes off. Typically, there's a nervousness, particularly for high intensity racing pre-race as you're waiting around for to getting channeled into the race sh uh, shoot and ready to go. And the way that typically, you know, this, this plays out is that a lot of athletes are looking for something to do with their hands. They're trying to sip on something. So having a bottle that you can throw away with just uh, some drink that you can be sipping on prior to race start is a good thing. Uh, for Lee, that was using one of our prime sachets. It's about 80 milligrams of caffeine and 1,000 milligrams of taurine. That's sufficient to really help that confident and calm position before we get into the high-intensity racing itself. Let's do that now. Okay, so Olympic distance, one and a half kilometers in the swim for a sprint. It's typically half that. For high intensity racing and sprints and Olympics, the, the, the swim is fast. You're going to come out of the water knowing that you've just done a good 10, 20, 25 minutes of high intensity exercise before you even get onto the bike. And for Lee, his uh, use of the nutrition to really support that high intensity bike, and that's 40 kilometers of course in Olympic distance, uh, was two times of the s -fuels primed, 80 milligrams each, in his hydration on the bike. And that is mixed with the Zone 4 drink, uh, which is then together two serves, 60 grams of carbohydrate. And that was all mixed together into his uh, you know, aerodynamic bar hydration system. And he's just sipping on that through the race. And you know, this is typically an hour, hour plus, in Lee's case, 69 minutes uh, for 40 kilometers. And that's a, that's a great time. And it wasn't like he came off the bike and he'd burn all his matches and there was nothing left to then go and execute a great run. Lee got into the run, continued, felt like, in fact, his point was is that all of the long sessions he'd done on the bike in training with the Enduro IQ squad really made the bike feel quite managed and not really burning a whole lot of matches. When he got to the run, in fact, he had the fastest run split in his age group. And for that, he used the Zone 5, which again is around about 58 uh, uh, grams of carbohydrate. So, and then of course that's a 10K run in Olympic distance. So, you know, a great mix of the use of caffeine and carbohydrate and the dosing of how it was used through the bike and through the run to support this very high intensity racing. Well, all in all, Lee landed on the podium, second place for his age group, an excellent result. He's now thinking half Ironman, half marathon racing. And of course that's a, that's a different fueling uh, approach again. But for high intensity, you know, the use of caffeine to really help offset some of that perceived exertion. We have got the links here again to that earlier video where we talked about how to really offset that rate of perceived exertion that comes with high intensity racing. The fueling here, of course, includes carbohydrate to support this type of intensity, but really mixing it with the caffeine and the carnitine and the taurine in S Fuels Prime will really help to manage that rate of perceived exertion so that you can feel in control of the race even at these high intensities. Hope you found that interesting. You can find all the products on SFuels, go longer.com. Thanks for joining and we'll see you real soon. Happy